द लिविंग वर्ल्ड हाउ वंडरफुल इज द लिविंग वर्ल्ड द वाइड रेंज ऑफ लिविंग टाइप इज अमेजिंग द एक्स्ट्रा ऑर्डिनरी हैबिटेट इन विच वी फाइंड लिविंग ऑर्गेनिजम बी इट कोल्ड माउंटेन्स डिसिडवस फॉरेस्ट ओशियन फ्रेश वाटर लेक्स डेजर्ट्स और हॉट स्प्रिंग्स लिव्स अस स्पीचलेस द ब्यूटी ऑफ गेलोपिंग होर्स ऑफ द माइग्रेटिंग बर्ड्स वैली ऑफ फ्लावर्स एंड टेकिंग सार्क इबॉक्स अवे एंड अ डीप सेंस ऑफ वंडर द इकोलॉजिकल कॉन्फ्लिक्ट एंड कोऑपरेशन एमंग मेंबर्स ऑफ पॉपुलेशन एंड एमंग द पॉपुलेशन ऑफ ए कम्युनिटी और इवन द मोलिकुलर ट्रैफिक इन साइड अ सेल मेक्स अस डीपली रिफ्लेक्ट ऑन वॉट इन डीड इज लाइफ This question has two implicit questions within it. The first is a technical one and seeks answer to what is living is as opposed to non-living. And the second is philosophical one. The seek answer to what is the purpose of life. As scientist we shall not attempt answering the questions. We will try to reflect on what is living. Diversity in living world If you look around you will see a large variety of living organism be it potted plant insect birds your pets other animals and plants there are also several organisms that you cannot see with your naked eye but they all are around you if you were to increase the area that you make observation in the range and variety of organism that you see would increase obviously if you were to visit dense forest you would probably see a much greater number and kinds of living organisms in it each different kind of plant animal or organ organism that you see represent a species the number of species that are known and described range between 1.7 to 1.8 billion 1.7 to 1.8 billion this refers to biodiversity or the number and the types of organism present on earth we should remember here that as we explore new areas even old one new organism are continuously being identified as stated earlier there are millions of plants and animals in the world we know plants and animals in our own area by their local names these local names would vary from place to place even within a country probably you would recognize the confusion that would be created if we did not did not find way and means to talk to each other to refer to organisms we are talking about hence there is a need to standardize the naming of living organisms such that a particular organism is known by the same name all over the world this process is called nomenclature obviously nomenclature or naming is the only possible when the organism is described correctly and we know that what organism need to be attached to this is known as identification in order to facilitate the study number of scientists have established procedure to assign a scientific name to each organism each known organism this is acceptable to biologist all over the world for plants scientific names are based on agreed principles and criteria which are provided by provided in international code for botanical nomenclature you may ask how are animals named animal taxonomists have evolved international code of zoological nomenclature the scientist name ensure that each organism has only one name described of description of any organism should enable the people in any part of the world to arrive at the same name they also ensure that such a name has not been used for any other organism known biologists uh, follow universally accepted principle to provide scientific names to organism known organism each uh, name has two component the generic name and the specific epithet the system of providing a name with two component is called binomial nomenclature this naming system is given by carlos linnaeus is being practiced by biologist all over the world this naming system using a two word format was found convenient let us take the example of mango to understand the way of providing scientific name better the scientific name of mango is written as magnifera indica mangifera indica let us see how it is binomial name in this name mangifera represent the genus while indica is particularly a species or a specific epithet other universal rule or nomenclature are as follow first one 
Biological names are generally in Latin and are written in italics. They are Latinized or derived from Latin irrespective of their origin. The first word in biological name represents the genus while the second component denotes the specific epithet. Both the words in biological name when written are separately underlined or printed in italic to indicate their Latin origin. And the fourth rule is the first word denoted the genus starting with a capital letter while the specific epithet starts with a small letter. It can be illustrated with the example of Mangifera indica. Name of the author appears after the specific epithet that is at the end of the biological name and is written in an abbreviated form example Mangifera indica lin. It indicates that this species was first described by Linnaeus. Since it is nearly impossible to study all the living organisms, it is necessary to devise some means to make this possible. This process is classification. Classification is the process by which anything is grouped into convenient categories based on some easily observable characters. For example, we easily recognize groups such as plants or animals or dog or cat or insect. The moment we use any of these terms, we associated certain characters with the organisms that in, in that group. What image do you see when you think of a dog? Obviously, each one of us will see dogs and not cats. Now if we were to think Alstonians, we know that we are talking about similarly. Suppose we were to say mammals, you would of course think of animals with external ear and body hair. Likewise in plant, if we try to talk of wheat, the picture in which our mind will be of wheat plant not of rice or any other plant. Hence all these dogs, cat, mammals, wheat, rice, plants, animals etc. are convenient categories we use to study organisms. The scientific terms for this category is Taxa. Here you must recognize that taxa can indicate categories at very different level. Plants also form a taxa. Wheat is the, also a taxa. Similarly, animals, mammals, dogs are all taxa. But you know that a dog is a mammal and mammals are animals. Therefore, animals, mammals, dogs represent taxa at different level. Hence, Based on characteristic, all living organisms can be classified into different taxa. This process is called taxonomy. External and internal structure along with the structure of a cell, development process and ecological information of organisms are essential and form the basis of modern taxonomic studies. Hence, characterization, identification, classification, nomenclature are the process that are the basic to the taxonomy. Taxonomy is not something new. Human beings have always been interested in knowing more and more about the various kind of organism, particularly with reference to their own use. In early days, human beings needed to find source for their basic needs of food, clothing and shelter. Hence, the earliest classification were based on the uses of various organisms. Human beings were since long not only in interested in knowing more about the different kind of organism and their diversities but also the relationship among them. This branch of study was referred to as systematics. The word systematics is derived from Latin word systema which means systematic arrangement of organism. Linnaeus used Systema Nature as the title of his publication. The scope of systematics was later enlarged to include identification, nomenclature, and classification. Systematics takes into account evolutionary relationship between organisms. So, our next topic is taxonomic categories. Classification is not a single step, step process but involves hierarchy of steps in which each step represents a rank or category. Since the category is a part of overall, overall taxonomic arrangement, it is called the taxonomic category and all categories together constitute the taxonomic hierarchy. Each category referred to as unit of classification in fact represents a rank and is commonly termed as taxon, plural taxa as we have earlier studied. Taxonomic categories and hierarchy can be 
illustrated by an example. Insect represent a group of organism sharing common features like three pair of joint leg. It means insect are recognizable concrete object which can be classified and thus we are given a rank or category. Can you name other such organisms group of organisms remember group represent category category further denotes rank each rank or taxon in fact represent a unit of classification these taxonomic group categories are distinct biological entities and not merely morphological aggregates taxonomical studies of all known organisms have led to the development of common categories such as kingdom phylum or division for plant division for plant class order family genus species all organisms include those in plants and animal kingdom have species as the lowest category now the question you may ask is how to replace an organism in various categories the basic requirement is the knowledge of characters of an individual or organism of group of organism this helps in identifying similarities and dissimilarities among the individuals of the same kind of organism as well as the other kinds of organism species taxonomic studies consider a group of individual organisms with the fundamental similarities as a species one should be able to distinguish one species from the other closely related species but on the distinct morphological differences let us consider mangifera indica solenum tuberosum potato and panthera leo lion all three names indica tuberosum and leo represent the species specific epithet while the first mangifera solenum and panthera are genera represent another higher level of taxon or category each genus may have one or more than one specific epithet representing different organism but having morphological similarities for example panthera has another specific epithet called tigris and solenum includes species like nigrum and melon gena Human beings belong to the specific sapiens, which is grouped into the genus Homo. The scientific name thus for the human being is written as Homo sapiens. Genus Genus comprises a group of related species which has more than more characters in common in comparison to species of other genera. We can say that genera are aggregate of closely related species. For example, potato and brinjal are two different species but both the two genus solenum lion panthera leo leopard and tiger panthera tigris with several common features are all species of the genus panthera this genus differs from another genus felis which includes cats family this the next category family has a group of related genera with still less number of similarities as compared to genus and species families are characterized on the basis of both vegetative and reproductive feature of plant species among different plant of among plants for example three different genera solenum petunia and datura are placed in family solanaceae among animals for example genus panthera comprising lion tiger leopard is put along with genus felis cats in the family of felidae similarly if you observe the feature of cat and a dog you will find some similarities and some differences as well they are separated into two different families felidae and candy respectively order you may have seen earlier that categories like species, genus, and families are based on the number of similar characters. Generally, order and other higher taxonomic categories are identified based on the aggregates of characters. Other order being a higher category is a assemblage of families which exhibit a few similar characters. The similar characters are less in numbers as compared to different genera include included in a family plant families like convolvulaceae solanaceae are included in order polomoniales mainly based on the floral characters the animal order carnivora includes families like felidae and canidae class this category includes related order for example order primata comprising monkey gorilla and given is placed in class mammalia along with Order Carnivora that includes animals like tiger, cat, and dog. Class Mammalia has other orders also. 
phylum classes comprising animals like fishes amphibians reptiles birds along with mammals constitute the next higher category called phylum all these based on the common feature like presence of notochord and dorsal hollow neural sy system are included in phylum chordata in case of plant classes with a few similar characters are assigned to higher categories called division kingdom all animals belonging to various phyla are assigned to higher categories called kingdom animalia in the classification system of animals the kingdom planty on the other hand is distinct the comprises all plants from various division henceforth will refer to these two groups as animal and plant kingdoms here you we can see kingdom phylum division class order family genus and species the taxonomic categories species to kingdom has been shown in ascending order starting with species these are broad categories however taxonomists have also developed sub categories in this hierarchy to facilitate more sound and scientific placement of various taxa look at the hierarchy in figure 1.1 can you recall this basis of arrangement say for example as we go higher from a species to kingdom the number of common characteristic goes on decreasing lower the taxa more the characteristic that the numbers within the taxon share higher the categories greater is the difficult to determine the relation to the other taxa at the same level hence the problem of classification becomes more complex here is the table we can see with some example common name biological name genus family order class phylum or division as like man homo sapiens homo hominidae primata mammalia chordata house fly musca domestica musca muscidae diptera insecta arthropoda mango mangifera indica mangifera anarchidiaci sapindels dicotyledony angiospermi wheat traticum stevum Traticum, Poesi, Poels, Monocotyledony, and H. Angiospermi. So, thank you so much.